right now I'm just putting uh, the first coat of the top side paint on, mainly so that I can keep the inside of the hull a little cleaner when I'm working in there. Uh, being an enamel base and having a little sheen to it will help do that. So as you can see, I've got all of the parts and the bilge painted, and now what we'll need to do is to start installing those floor beams and deck beams. In addition to that, I've got a couple of other pieces that I made, including the mass step, and I'm going to be trimming off the back of the transom. In addition, hopefully we'll start to get some bulkheads in. All of that's coming up on this episode of The Art of Boat Building. In the last episode, I got started painting the bilge of the boat. I spent a good part of a week finishing up the bilge painting. As I had mentioned before, I used Total Bilge by Total Boat. It's an oil-based paint with a small amount of epoxy added. This gives it a hard, high-gloss finish that protects the bilge against dirt, grime, and mildew. Epoxy paint is quite different than epoxy resin. Epoxy cures while paint dries as the solvents evaporate. Total Boat is epoxy paint, not epoxy resin. I divided the painting into sections, painting the aft first, then the fore section, and finishing with the midship. I ultimately put two coats of paint in the bilge. In addition to gloves, I wore a respirator and a Tyvek paint suit for added protection. I painted the floor and deck beam separately for convenience and coverage. Using letter and number stamps, I labeled the floor beams as not to get confused where they belonged. This turned out to be pretty beneficial when installing the beams. As with the bilge, I primed with topside primer and applied two coats of bilge paint. Painting the deck beams is an unnecessary un step, uh, but it's one that I thought, well, I can do it, so why not? I also made sure I sealed the ends of the wood really well. I also painted the aft locker floor, and one of the things that was handy that I have discovered is I've made these little stands that are basically a piece of uh, triangular piece of plywood that has some drywall screws in there. Uh, by doing that, it's really easy to paint one side and then flip that over so that it can paint both sides. So one of the pieces that I had not made in the last episode was a cleat to go across the transom in order to hold the aft deck. So what I started with was I cut the same arc as the other uh, aft deck beams, and then I put a bevel upon it that's uh, almost about 45 degrees, which is what the transom is set at. Uh, then marked it and cut that out. After I did that, I of course put a coat of primer and a couple of coats of bilge paint on it. So there's one more piece that we need to make, and that is the mass step. So let's go to the drawing and I'll show you what that is. Well, in order to get started making our mass step, we need to determine what size and shape that it is. And all of that information is here in the plans. So the first thing we need to know is that the plans are drawn at one and a half inches equals one foot. So the best way to get that information is to scale that off of the drawings. And we're going to do that with an architect scale. Now you can see here on the plans that the mass step is made of two, a two by four out of oak. And this is it here. And we only see half of it because the floorboards are covering on this side. So here on my scale, you can see that one and a half equals one foot. So what I can do here now is to scale this off and see that it needs to be nine inches long. So here in the sectioned side view, we can see that indeed it shows here that it's nine inches long. Now, it slopes down here like so, and I can scale that off and see that that slope starts at five inches. The reason it does that is because 
the floorboard beam is right here. And if this went over, it would run into it. So that's why it's sloped like that. Now the other thing is that it's notched down here. So one dimension I need is from here to here. And I'll get that directly off of the boat. So now I can see then, if I scale this way, that that is about a half an inch that way. And that from here, from the frame over, we'll have a half inch bulkhead, and that what remains then is about five eighths of an inch. And I get that because we know that this floor timber is one and an eighth, so you subtract uh, a half inch from that, you end up with five eighths. So the other thing is we can see how the mast slips down in here into some kind of a slot. So on the other plan, so here on the spars hardware and bulkhead plan, we can see the size that that tendon needs to be. And here it says that the tendon is one inch wide. So that way we know how wide that slot needs to be. So now we have most all the vital dimensions we need in order to make the math step. So to make it a little easier for myself and to illustrate it, I've done a drawing with all of those dimensions on it. So you can see here that I put together this drawing of what the mass step is going to look like. So you can see that it's two by four by nine overall, and that this step back is five inches, and that this notch at the bottom comes over five eighths of an inch, and by measuring the frame distance in the boat, I came up with six and 11 sixteenths. I also can see that here is where the one inch slot gets cut in and it goes back two and three quarter inches. Now that I have all the dimensions for the mass step determined, I can get started building it.
Now that I've got the mast step all made, there's one last thing I need to do, and that is to put a through bolt through it. And you can see here in the plans, it shows where that's to be located. Now the point of that bolt is to stop that mast step from splitting if there is, when there's a lot of sideways movement on the mast. So I'm going to put a 5 8 inch bronze bolt through the mast step. Well, I've put off installing the deck beam so that I have a little better access to the bulkhead areas. So let's refer to the plans here at uh, sheet six, which is spars, hardware, and bulkheads. And you can see here, this cross section shows the bulkhead at frame seven. And some of the things that we need to look at here are that there are these vertical members. There are five of them that will hold the bulkhead on there. Uh, in addition to that, there is a block of oak here, which is a half an inch thick, and that is to hold the halyard cleats that would be mounted to that. When I was out at the wooden boat school, I had the opportunity to take some photographs of the haven that I had been sailing. And in this photograph, you can see that the bulkhead actually has an access panel into the front of the boat. Now, on the plans, it says here that the forward compartment needs to be watertight. Now, one of the important things about this is that their limber hole here at frame seven, that there isn't one. And I had to actually go back in and fill in that limber hole because I had not seen that earlier when I was putting in the floor timbers. So what I would like to do is to make an access panel so that one could get in there and clean out and inspect the hole from the inside um, from time to time, probably at the end of each season. So my plan is to not just use 5 8 inch thick oak here, but to make these two members a little thicker so that I can mount that access panel on there. So in addition to these vertical pieces that we need to put in, the other thing is there's a couple of little pieces here on each corner in order to hold the bulkhead as it goes in there. The plans call for the bulkhead to be made of half-inch cedar covered with canvas. 
I'm going to use half inch marine plywood. So the first task is to put in these small corner braces.
Well, now that we've got all of the forward deck beams in, we can turn our attention to the stern. And before I put the aft deck beams in here, I want to shape the final shape of the transom. And I'm going to do not put those in there so that I'll have a place to sit and operate. So the first thing to do is to go to sheet seven, which is the full size patterns. And I laid that out on a little scrap piece of plywood. Uh, as you can see, I'm using my awl to punch through the, the um, plans in order to make an indent. And after I did that, then I took a small little thin batten and sprung it on there to get those curves fared. Uh, after I cut it out, uh, I can now lay it out on the transom. So I've got the piece of plywood all cut out and <clears throat> you can see um, that it will fit on here like so. Now the plans only show half of the transom and then what we'll do is flip this over the other way. So in order to lay this out, I line this up with the outside of the plank. And earlier I had made a little saw cut here uh, when I was building the transom that marked the center line. So that way I know how to line this up. And and take a couple of clamps and secure it. And in order to mark it, I'm going to use my scratch hole to just scratch a mark in there. Since the transom already has a finish on it, it's really hard to get a pencil or anything else to make a mark on there. And we'll flip it over and do the other side. That came out really nice. I just love the smell of that walnut. It's really nice seeing the boat taking shape. That's about all we have time for in this episode. So thanks for watching and I'll see you the next time on The Art of Boat Building.